Good day, everyone. My name is Kevin. For this session, I'll be talking about the IPCRF electronic tool for the school year 2019 to 2020. Before I show you how to use it, let me tell you a little bit about the tool. First, the tool is a Microsoft Excel macro-enabled workbook file with a .xlsm file extension designed for offline use. It contains printable templates for the IPCRF parts 1 to 4, as well as an encoding form that collects data for COT and IPCRF QET ratings and data for core behavioral competencies. So who will be using this tool? There are two types of users, the rater and the ratee. For the purposes of this presentation, I've simplified the flowchart, taking out all the steps that don't necessarily involve the electronic tool while still following the procedures we previously set. First, the rater downloads the IPCRF electronic tool, encodes the rater's ratees data, then encodes the COT and QET ratings. At this point, the rater hands the electronic tool to the ratee, who encodes parts 2 and 4, then gives the file back to the rater or to the school head for submission online. We've identified five major steps, each involving several activities. We'll discuss each step in the process, except for the submission, which will be discussed in a different session. Let's begin with downloading. First, let's slip into the role of the rater. Here are the activities for step one, download and extract. The first thing we must do as a rater is to download a copy of the new IPCRF electronic tool. Keep in mind that the versions that you may have obtained prior to May 4 should no longer be used. The system will not accept them. If you obtained a copy of the tool recently, ensure you have the version with a proficient tool that has automatic ratings of 5 and objective 10. Any version other than that is no longer valid. So where does one download the tool? You can find the tool by opening this link, which takes you to a Google Drive folder. In there, you will find a zip named DepEd prescribed IPCRF parts 1 to 4 SY 2019 to 2020. Simply right click on the file and click download. When you have downloaded the zip file, you must then extract the Excel file from inside it. It is important that you remember, and I recommend you emphasize this when you cascade to the field, that you should not open the IPCRF Excel tool without first extracting it. In the past, some users have complained that they cannot edit or save the Excel tool, or that the data they encoded is lost after saving and closing Excel. That was probably due to this missed step. In Windows, it is easy to identify a zip file. These three icons are examples of how it looks like. The first one is when you do not have a file compression software installed, such as WinRAR or 7-Zip. The default icon in Windows is a folder with a zipper. In some cases, the file may look like the last two icons, a stack of books bundled together with a belt. To extract a zip file in Windows, assuming you don't have a file compression software installed, there are generally two methods. I'll quickly show you how to do it using the two methods so it's clear to everybody, as well as offer you suggestions of how you can cascade this to the field. The first one is to right-click on the file and then selecting or clicking Extract All. This opens the default extraction tool in Windows. Simply select the destination or leave it as is and click the Extract button. This will create a new Excel file outside the zip. You can then open this Excel file. For the second method, you can do this by opening or double-clicking the zip file. This does not open any other program or window. It opens in the same File Explorer window and looks as if you've just opened a regular folder with a single file in it. But do not be fooled, you are still inside the zip file. Notice the Extract menu in pink at the top of the window. This tells you the view is of a compressed folder. This is when some users make the mistake of opening the Excel file. I'll remind you again that you should not open it before extracting it. To extract it, you can drag and drop the file into the desktop to create a copy of the tool. 
You can also copy and paste the file from here, or you can click the Extract All menu at the top, which is similar to the method A which I showed you earlier. For Mac users, double-clicking or opening the zip file should automatically extract the Excel tool. Now that we've downloaded the PCRF electronic tool, let's proceed to the second step, which is to encode the RATES data. Here are the activities for step 2, opening the Excel IPCRF electronic tool, enabling editing, enabling macros, encoding the school's data, encoding the raters' data, making copies, and encoding the rates data. To begin, we need to open the Excel file. When opening the IPCRF electronic tool, here are a few things we need to remember. You must open it on a laptop, tablet, or desktop PC running Windows or Mac OS. You cannot open the tool using any kind of mobile phone, tablets running Android or Windows RT, the iPad or Chromebooks, and other laptops running Windows RT. In addition to the types of compatible devices, here is a list of the programs and apps you can and cannot use to open the IPCRF electronic tool. You can open the tool using the desktop app of the Microsoft Office Excel with the following versions. For Windows, it's 2010 and 2013. For both Windows and the Mac, it's 2016, 2019, and Office 365. Note, you should not use the online or web versions of Microsoft Excel because macros aren't supported. You also cannot use the, these programs. If you are on a Mac, do not open with Numbers or older Office for Mac apps, versions 2004, 2008, or 2011. Furthermore, you should not use Google Sheets or any other Microsoft Office alternatives such as WPS Office, LibreOffice, or OpenOffice. Note that if you open the IPCRF tool with any of the apps in the Don't column, in other words, not Excel, the tool is forever broken and you need to download a new copy. Again, it's important that you emphasize this when cascading to the field. There were cases reported that the macros don't work. The reason it turned out was because they were not using Microsoft Excel. If you are sure that your device and your app are compatible, you can then open the tool. When the tool is opened, Excel automatically puts the file in protected view for security reasons. It does this for files downloaded from the internet. Notice the yellow bar that says protected view below the ribbon. You need to click the Enable Editing button so you can begin editing the file. Otherwise, it will remain disabled in protected view. On the back, it's more straightforward. Excel will greet you with a dialog box with an alert asking whether to enable or disable editing. Just click Enable Editing. After enabling editing, you also need to enable the macros, which are disabled by default. Click the Enable Content button to allow macros. Failure to do so means that Excel won't be able to run the custom code that makes the IPCRF tool work. On the Mac, again, Excel will beat you with a dialog box with an alert asking whether to enable or disable the macros. Click Enable Macros. In Windows, if you do not see the Enable Content button in the yellow bar below the ribbon, it does not necessarily mean that the macros are already enabled. After confirming that they are disabled, for example, when an error message is shown saying so after clicking a button, you need to perform this suggested workaround. In the ribbon, click the File menu. In the Available Options in the vertical panel to the left, find Options. It is usually found at the bottom. Try to scroll down the vertical panel if you do not see it. Click it when you find it. This opens the Excel Options dialog box. On the panel to the left, find and click the Trust Center option, usually found at the bottom of the list. In the Trust Center, find and click the Trust Center Settings button. The Trust Center Center dialog box opens. In the panel to the left, find and click the Macro Settings. Under Macro Settings, click Enable All Macros. 
ensure that the radio button for the Enable All Macros option is activated, then click the OK button. This closes the Trust Center dialog box and returns you to the Excel Options dialog box and just click the OK button again. Close all, open Excel workbooks and reopen the IPCRF tool to apply the changes. Now, assuming you have enabled the macros, you should now be ready to encode the RAY-T and RAY-TRS data into the form. But before that, I'd like to take a little detour. Let's look at the different parts of the tool so it makes sense to you when you encode data later. This Excel workbook has four usable tabs or sheets. You can usually find the sheets at the bottom of the Excel window. The electronic tool has the templates for all the parts of the IPCRF, each on its own tabs. These are the part one to four tabs. But the first tab you'll see when you open the tool is the encoding tab. Here are the properties of each tab. For the encoding tab, it is editable because it contains the data collection form. It is also protected, which means you cannot modify this sheet. Only white cells are editable. This form is also non-printable. For parts 1, 2, and 3, they all have the same properties. They are all not editable because all data that are needed for these parts are encoded in the encoding tab. They are all protected and not editable and printable. The part 4 tab is editable but also not protected to allow the users to make any necessary changes for crafting the development plans. And of course, it's printable. Let's focus on the encoding tab. Part 1 and just below that is part 2. Let's go back to the top. Now, let's proceed to the next step, which is encoding the school's data. Here is the part where you need to encode the school's information. There are several fields. First is region. Region field is a drop-down option with the following options available. The second field is division, which is another drop-down box whose options depend on the selected region. Next is district and or municipality. School ID, which only accepts six digits school IDs from 100,000 to 699,999. Next is school name. We recommend you input the complete and proper name of the school. Next is school type, which is another drop-down option between urban and rural. Next is school size, which is a drop-down box for small, medium, large, or very large. And the last field for the school's information is curricular classification. Here are the choices. Note that the choice you select in the curricular classification field will affect choices that will be available in the preceding parts of the tool, specifically the level taught, grade level taught, and subject level taught. Next, we encode the raters data which contains only three fields. First is the rater's name, and we recommend you use this format, last name, comma, first name, and then the middle initial. Next field is the position, which is a drop-down option between these positions. And the last field is date of review, which accepts date from February 2020 and onwards using this format. At this point in time, this field is not required. You only need to encode the date of review when finalizing part one. Okay, after finishing encoding of the school's information and the rater's information, you need to save the Excel workbook and then close it. What we've done so far is basically make a template. Remember, the rater is doing this. He or she must prepare all the IPCRF files for each of the teacher that he or she will be rating. Suppose I need to prepare the IPCRF tool for one teacher, 
I will just duplicate the template that I've created and then rename the duplicate to include the name of the ratee or the teacher that I will be rating. Then I will open that file. Now, don't forget to enable editing and enable macros for this step. You need to do that every time you open the IPCRF tool. Now let's proceed to the next step, encoding the ratees data. Here are the fields that you need to accomplish. There are several fields. Let's begin with the name of the employee. Again, we recommend you use the format that you used for the rater field last name, comma, first name, and the middle initial. Next, you select the position, which is a drop-down option between teachers 1 to 3, sped teacher 1 to 5, master teachers 1 to 4, and special science teachers 1 to 5. Remember that when you change the position, or when you change the data for this field, it also changes the form. For example, if you select a position that uses the proficient form, part one for this tool changes accordingly. If you select, for example, master teacher, the form will change into the prof highly proficient form. Now you will know that the form has changed by looking at the background color. It will turn green for the proficient form, blue for the highly proficient form. Next, the employee ID number, employment status, which is a drop-down option, age, sex, which are also drop-down options. Next is level taught. The options available here will depend on the selected curricular classification under the school's information. As I mentioned earlier, whatever you selected in the curricular classification will determine the options that will be available here. For example, if I selected in the curricular classification kindergarten to grade 6, the options that will be available here will be kindergarten and elementary. If however I chose kindergarten to grade 10 in the curricular classification, the options that will be available in the level taught field will be kindergarten, elementary, and junior high school, and so on. Next is grade level taught. This option depends again on the selected level taught. For example, if I've selected elementary in the level taught, the options that will be available here will be kindergarten to grade six. If I chose junior high school, the options that will be available here will be grade seven to 10 and so on. If you've selected else in the subject taught, which is the next field, the grade level taught field will be disabled. Next is the subject taught, which is a list or a drop down list of all the subjects. This field changes to strand if you've selected senior high school in level taught. Then we have number of years in teaching, highest degree obtained, and area of specialization, which are all dropped on options. We now have completed step two. Let's proceed to the next step, encoding of part one, the COT and IPCRF QET ratings. Here are the activities involved, COT ratings, QET ratings, and then finally finalizing part one. So here, let's go back to the encoding tab and let's look at part one. Below the raters information or the ratees information, we have four COT columns. Let's focus on the first one. At the beginning, all COT columns are disabled except for COT one. Now you will know that this is enabled because you have a cell at the top that's colored white. This allows you to select a drop-down option from among the identified subjects. Once you select a subject, the rating column will be enabled. Again, you will confirm that the 
column or the cells are enabled because they have turned white. For the proficient form, this column will accept values from 3 to 7. For the highly proficient form, it will accept values 4 to 8. The second column, the RPMS 5-point scale, will be automatically populated based on the input on the rating column. After inputting the rating, you need to input the date of observation at the bottom. This field accepts dates beginning June 3, 2019 using this format. After entering the date of observation, the rater will then click the lock COD1 button which prompts for the Raider's password. The Raider will then nominate or set a password with minimum six characters. This password will be used later when locking other COT columns and finalizing part one. So it's important that the Raider must not forget this. After confirming the password, the Raider will click the Go button. This locks COT1 and enables COT2. A little reminder, COT columns are disabled until the previous COT has been locked. For example, when COT1 was locked, COT2 is enabled. In other words, you must input the COT ratings sequentially from COT1, 2, 3, and 4. Note that COT columns are not required meaning if you do not have data for a particular COT column, you do not need to input them. Next, after finishing encoding of COT ratings, we then encode the QET ratings. It's at this part right here. Notice that we have some colored cells. You only need to input on the white cells these cells accepts whole numbers from 1 to 5. Input the ratings for the QET columns. After that, we need to finalize part 1. And to do that, we must input the date of review back in the raters information. As I've said earlier, this field is not required until finalizing part 1. After entering the date of review, input the approving authority, name, and position. Then the rater will click Finalize Part 1 button, which prompts for the rater's password that was previously set. Input the rater's password and click Go. This locks Part 1. You will confirm that Part 1 has been finalized because the background color has turned red. At this point, the rater transfers the file to the RAT. So, we've completed steps 1, 2, and 3, and now let's discuss the last one, encoding of parts 2 and 4 by the RAT. Okay, here are the steps involved. Let's begin with finalizing part 2. Back in the encoding tab, below the part 1 is the part to form. The rate only need to tick on the boxes of the comp competency indicators that he or she has demonstrated during the performance cycle. After ticking all the appropriate boxes, the rate will then click finalize part 2, which prompts for a rate's password. Now this is separate from the rater's password that was set by the rater earlier. This one the RAT will think of a new password, again, minimum of six characters. This password will be used later in finalizing or unfinalizing parts two and four. After confirming the password, the RAT will click on the Go button, which locks part two. Again, you will confirm that part two has been locked or finalized because the screen or the background color has turned red. Finally, the RAT opens part 4 and encodes his or her development plans. After encoding, at the bottom, the RAT will click Finalize Part 4 button, 
which will again prompt for the ratees password that he or she set when finalizing part two. After inputting the ratees password, click the go button and that should lock part four. And that finishes all the steps we need to do in accomplishing the IPCRF electronic tool. For the next part, the RAT would give the file back to the rater or the school head for the online submission. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much.